welcome to session 3 the topic we'll be discussing in this session is mac medium access control so we'll be discussing why we need a specialized mac for wireless networks and then we have this we'll be discussing several way of accessing the mediums like several medium accessing techniques like SDMA, space division multiple access, FDMA, frequency division multiple access, and TDMA, time division multiple access. And then we will be discussing few types of fixed TDM, fixed time division multiplexing techniques. So that's what we will be discussing in this session. So the objective, of, the learning objectives of this session is. At the end of this session, the learners will be able to understand the need for a specialized Mac for wireless communication and why the existing Mac from the wired networks cannot be used in wireless networks. What is the drawback of that? Why we need a specialized Mac and what the specialized Mac, what, the, what features does it have? These things they'll be able to understand. And also the learners will be able to understand the working principle of space division multiple access, frequency division multiple access and time division multiple access. And also they will be able to explain uh, and they will be able to uh, describe how the, the fixed TDM like classical Aloha, slotted Aloha, CSMA, carrier sense multiple access, uh, DAMA and PRMA techniques works. All these are various multiple access uh, techniques. Okay, fine. So let us start with the motivation for a specialized Mac. Why we need a specialized Mac in wireless networks? So first let us try to understand, is it possible to use the existing Mac from the wired networks in wireless network. So in wired network, the commonly used MAC in IEEE 802.3 is CSMA CD, which is carrier sense multiple access with pollution detection. So how CSMA CD works in the sense, if a sender want to send something, the sender will sense the medium. So in case of IEEE 802.3, it's a wired medium. That is the sender will sense the wire, whether it is free or not. If the medium is busy, the sender will wait until it becomes free. If the medium is free, the sender will start sending the data. And also at the same time, he will be listening the medium. Why he is listening means because there should not be any collision by somebody else sending some other data through the same wire. So the sender will be also sensing the while, while transmitting also he will be continuing to sense the medium. So at some point of time, if the sender detects a collision, he will stop sending and the sender will send a jamming signal, which means there is a collision and the and he is signaling the opponent uh, party. Okay, so this is how CSMA CD works, right? So in CSMA CD, if the sender wants to send something, first he will sense the medium. If the medium is free, he will send the data. But at the same time, he will also listen to the medium. Is there any collision happening or not? If there is a collision, immediately he will stop sending and he will be sending the jamming signal. If the medium is busy, then the sender will wait until it becomes free. So this is the overall concept. Now, why not we adopt this same technology to wireless networks? Okay. See, in CSMA CD, the sender will try to detect the collision at the receiver end. So because, because the strength of the signal 
is almost same in the sender end and also in the receiver end because the signal is passing through a wire and when the sender is trying to detect a collision at the receiver end obviously he can also detect a collision at the sender end so that is not a problem in a wired network but that cannot be done in wireless networks because because as we know the signal property what happens in the sense the strength of the signal will reduce in proportional to the square of the distance so that is what the concept of inverse square law says so csmacd basically it will fail in wireless networks because the sender cannot detect a collision at the receiver end because the signal when it reaches the receiver it will become very uh, it will become comparatively less in strength so the sender who is sitting far away cannot detect a collision at the uh, uh, receiver end so here what may happen in the sense assume a sender is sender if if csma cd if we apply in wireless networks then what will happen in the sense says sender a is sending some data to another mobile station b okay this this data is reaching b now assume that some other station c is sending a data to b now when the data of c reaches b and when the data of a reaches b there is a collision but this collision cannot be sensed by a because the strength of the signal will reduce when it reaches the sender so the sender's range also will be limited so he cannot detect a collision of that distance so the sender will assume that the data has been transmitted successfully and then he will be start sending the next data packet but actually that has not happened the, there is a collision and the sender failed to detect the collision so so csma cd uh, will not work in uh, in wireless networks okay so this is the main problem with uh, uh, with csma cd so we cannot use the existing csma cd in the uh, uh, wireless network so this is the need for a specialized mac okay so so the basic problem is that in in wireless network uh, this if a collision occurs uh, in the in, in wireless network the signal strength decreases in proportional to the square of the distance okay the sender may apply carrier sense and detect an idle medium and thinking that the middle medium is idle the sender may start sending but a collision happens at the receiver due to some other sender okay so this collision uh, cannot be detected by the sender the sender detects no collision and assumes that the data has been transmitted without errors but actually there is a collision and the data got destroyed so basically collision detection uh, becomes a difficult in wireless wireless networks and because of this reason we need a specialized mac okay. so so let us now understand how csma or cd fails uh, in wireless networks with some examples so whatever we have detected we have discussed that was explained here so sender a is sensing the medium and the medium is free so he is sending the data and the medium is free so he is sending the data to b at the same time c also want to send some data to b he is also sensing the medium and the medium is free so he is sending some data to b now there is a collision in b now sender cannot detect this collision because of the inverse square law the signal strength decreases with, with in proportion to the square of the distance so to that to that distance he cannot sense whether there is a collision or not so the sender assumes that there is no collision and he starts sending the next packet but actually there is a collision but actually there is a, a collision so this problem 
So this problem, so here the problem occurs because C is hidden to A and A is hidden to C. So this is called as hidden terminal problem. This is called as hidden terminal problem. So here basically CD fails, collusion deduction fails. Okay. So let us also dis discuss some other cases where this type of problems will occur. So first let us understand how the hidden and exposed terminal problem works. First let us see hidden terminal problem. If you apply the CSMACD in wireless networks, CSMACD is a technique which is used in wired networks that is IEEE 802.3. If we apply the same technique in wireless networks, then how it becomes a problem, let us try to understand. Okay, so here what happens in the sense, we have three mobile phones, we have three mobile phones in such a way that, in such a way that A can reach B, but, but it cannot reach C. The transmission range of A can reach B, but it cannot reach C. The deduction range also. A can deduct any signal from B, but it cannot detect any signal from C. Similarly, C can reach B, but not A. That is the transmission range of C goes up to B. And it, and it, and it also can deduct signals from B. It cannot transmit to A and also it cannot uh, detect any signals from A. B can reach both A and C. B can reach both A and C. That is the transmission range of B reaches A and also it reaches C. B can also detect from A and also it can detect from C. Okay. Now, now say for example, now, now say for example, A want to send some data to B. A, if A want to send some data to B, A will check, A will sense the carrier, whether the carrier is free or not. So the carrier is free. If the carrier is free, A will send the data to B. If, say at the same time, C also want to send something to B. So C also checks the carrier, senses the carrier. The carrier is free. So C will send some data to B, but there will be a collision at B because A is also transmitting at the same time. So this collision cannot be sensed by both A and C and they will assume that their data has been reached successfully to B. So this problem is called as hidden terminal problem because here C is hidden to A and A is hidden to C. So this is the this is one of the problem uh, that will happen if this is one of the problem that will happen uh, if uh, same technique from wired networks if if they are borrowed to wireless networks that is A sends to B which C cannot receive C wants to send to B C senses a free medium so C is fails so collision at B A cannot receive the collision so C D fails. So here A is hidden for C and C is also hidden for A. Okay. So similarly, there is another problem which is called as exposed terminal problem. So what is exposed terminal problem? In exposed terminal problem, what happens in the sense, assume the same scenario, but here, let us say B, send, B sends, B want to send something to A and B senses the carrier and the carrier is free. So B started sending something to A. Now C wants to send something to another terminal, which is not A or B, maybe C, which is, which is somewhere uh, out of the transmission range of A and B. Okay. But, but C, C is, but C waits, C defers its transmission because C can sense B. So C is thinking that C is communicating to somebody else. Sorry, B is communicating. So C thinks that uh, C is in the transmission range of B. So C thinks that uh, B is communicating with somebody else. Uh, so let me not use the medium. That is C is uh, checking the carrier sense and the medium is being used by C. So it is postponing or it is deferring its transmission. 
Okay, but actually, C can start sending because C is sending to somebody else. So there will not be any collision uh, because of that in B or A. Okay, so so this problem is called as exposed terminal problem. Here, here C is unnecessarily uh, deferring its transmission. C wants to send some data to some other load, which is not A or B. But C senses the medium, and the medium is getting used by B. So C thinks that B is using the medium. So if I send a data now, there may be a collision. So B is uh, postponing or deferring its communication. But actually, C need not postpone. So this problem is called as exposed terminal problem. Here C is exposed to B. Here C is exposed to B. Okay. Similarly, there is there can be another problem also with. Uh, uh, if we use the same uh, technique that is CSMA CD from wired network to wireless networks. So that problem is called as near and far terminal. So here let us assume this scenario. There are three mobile phones A, B and C where B and C are placed close to each other. The B and C are placed close to each other and A is little further away. Okay. Here, here B, here every node can reach every other node. That is A's transmission range can go up to B and C. And B's transmission range, obviously it can go up to A and C. And C's transmission range also can go up to A and B. And their detection range also. That is every mobile phone can reach every other mobile phone. And also here we are assuming that C is an orbiter. Orbiter in the sense C acts as a base station for coordinating the media media access. That is who will be getting the media access at what time that will be decided by C. That is C temporarily acts as an orbiter. Okay. But here what happens in the sense the, the mobile phones are placed in such a way that B is close to C. B is close to C. Okay. Now A and B, let us assume A and B having the same transmission power okay now what happens in the sense if a a sends anything to c if a sends anything to c that will be drained by b because when a sends something to c by the time it reaches b itself the signal will be low and b itself will uh, will absorb some of the signal b will drain out a signal and c signal and a signal uh, cannot reach C at all. Okay, C cannot receive A's transmission because B will drown out A. Because B will drown out A most of the time. Now C cannot apply a fair scheme for media access because it would only hear B. It cannot hear A at all. So this problem is called as near and far terminals. So B is near to C and A is far away from uh, C. So the one who is near to C is draining out the energy and is not allowing the other person to communicate with the orbiter. Okay. This problem is called as near and far terminals. So this problem may also occur if you use the uh, same CSMA CD technique from wired network in wireless networks. So this is, these are the reasons why we need a specialized MAC for wireless networks. This is about the motivation for a specialized Mac. Right? Now let us understand a few medium access techniques. So let us start with SDMA, space division multiple access technique. Okay. So space division multiple access technique, it is used for allocating a separate space to users in wireless networks. Okay. So the so, so, so the optimal case, so, so it is something like one of the example is assigning an optimal base station to a mobile phone user. One of the example is to assign an optimal uh, base station to a mobile phone user. That is the mobile phone, MS means mobile station or mobile phone may receive uh, connection from several base stations. It may be able to connect with several base station with a different quality. And the MAC algorithm 
will decide which uh, which base station is the best base station uh, based on frequency division multiplexing or time division multiplexing or core division multiplexing whatever it is available and that base station will be allocated for this mobile station okay but but nowhere uh, space division multiplexing uh, will be used in isolation it will be it will be used in com it will be used along with any of the techniques like frequency division multiplexing time division multiplexing or uh, code division multiplexing okay and the basis for the space division multiplexing algorithm is it is formed by cells and sectorized antenna okay so this is how space division multiplexing a multiple access technique works so the next kind of multiple access that we'll be discussing is frequency division multiple access so in pure frequency division multiple access it changes frequencies uh, according to certain pattern okay so it, it changes frequencies according to a certain pattern that is uh, so fdma so but but generally fdma will be combined with cdma in 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 many wireless systems fdma will be combined with uh, cdma uh, to avoid the problem called as narrow band interference okay so with with okay so so see there are there are two ways of uh, applying fdma there are two ways of using fdma the first method is pure fdma the first method is pure fdma so what is pure fdma pure fdma means you fix certain frequencies for certain users and don't change at all that is all every time the user will be using the same frequency the example is radio station here the example is radio station so in radio station what happens every time the user will be using uh, the particular radio station will be always using the same frequency the frequency will never change okay so that is called as pure fdma and another form of fdma is you can change the frequency according to certain pattern according to certain pattern maybe based on time okay this every day a uh, morning 6 to 7 this particular frequency will be used by one particular uh, station and and uh, again morning 7 to 8 that frequency will be used by some other station okay like that so different so here the frequencies will change so there are, so so there are two ways of using one is pure fdma pure fdma means fix the frequency for different users and there will not be any change whereas in uh, uh, there is another way which is not uh, is another way of uh, using fdma is change the frequencies according to certain pattern so fdma uh, combined with tdma is normally used in uh, uh, wireless systems uh, to circumvent narrow narrow, narrow band interference okay so either fdma is used with tdma or with uh, uh, With 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 CDMA like other techniques. Okay. So, so here the sender and the receiver have to agree on the hopping pattern. Hopping pattern means how the frequency is getting changed. How the frequency is getting changed. So that is called as hopping pattern. Okay. So so generally in wire in in wireless networks the frequency will not be fixed for a particular user. because if you fix the frequency for a particular user uh, permanently then there will be a law, uh, then there will be a, it means we are not properly using the bandwidth okay then the bandwidth is getting misused so to avoid that problem uh, the sender and the receiver will change the uh, frequencies during their communications okay so that frequency whatever the frequency in which the sender will communicate at different point of time that will be known to the receiver so that the so that the receiver can also tune in to that particular frequency so that concept is called as hopping pattern 
that concept is called as hopping pattern if the hopping pattern is not followed the receiver could not tune to the right frequency okay hopping patterns are normally fixed for longer duration hopping patterns are normally fixed for longer duration because if you keep on change the hopping pattern then also the senders and the sender and the receiver has to be coordinated again the coordination or synchronization it also becomes uh, difficult okay so so hopping patterns are typically fixed for longer duration of time and normally the fdma uses duplex channel that is both the partners uh, can send and receive at the same time and the communication from the mobile station to base station and base station to mobile station are separated with different frequencies these different frequencies will be used for communicate communication from mobile station to base station and different set of frequencies will be used for communicating from base station to mobile station and both the parties should know their frequencies or frequencies in advance the communication from mobile station to base station is called as uplink and the communication from base station to mobile station is called as downlink whenever communication happens from mobile station to base station that is called as uplink and whenever communication happens from base station to mobile station uh, that is called as downlink okay so uh, so this so we can let us consider this diagram so here you can see here you can see uh, there is a mobile station and also there is a base station so this is the mobile station or mobile phone and this is the uh, base station or the uh, tower okay so base station is technically called as uh, tower is technically called as base station so this is the base station and these are the frequencies in which uh, they are communicating okay the communication from the base station to the mobile station is done using this frequency okay and the communication from mobile station to base station is achieved through this frequency the communication from the base station to the mobile station is called as downlink i am representing as dl the communication from the mobile station to the base station is called as uplink i am calling it as ul okay so these are the set of frequencies these are the set of frequencies used for uplink that is for communication from the mobile station to the base station the the frequency range is between 890.2 megahertz to 915 megahertz and the communication from the base station to the mobile station for that the these range of frequencies were used that is for downlink the set of frequencies used were from 935.2 megahertz to 960 megahertz okay and the each channel has a bandwidth of 200 kilohertz each channel so this is one one channel okay so one channel the channel width is 200 kilohertz okay if the download frequency is sorry if the upload frequency let us consider the upload frequency if the uplink frequency if the uplink frequency is 890 megahertz plus n.2 megahertz okay uplink means mobile station to base station if the mobile station to base station if that communication is going through this frequency 890 8, 890 plus 0.2 megahertz okay then the downlink frequency will be fu plus 45 megahertz okay in this case what is fu 890 890 plus 45 is 935.2 935 plus 0.2 megahertz where n represents the channel where n represents the channel number okay so this is so this is how the communication happens that is if the mobile phone is using this frequency uh, to communicate with the base station then the base station will use this frequency if the mobile station is using this frequency uh, then the base station will be using this frequency to communicate back with the mobile station right so this is the overall working principle of fdma
Okay, so what we have discussed in the sense, see there are two types of FDMA available. One is pure FDMA, the other one is which is not a pure FDMA. In in case of pure FDMA, the frequencies were fixed, and it will never change. That is, the station will permanently use that frequency for communication, but that technique commonly we cannot use for uh, wireless networks, because in wireless networks uh, the user is not going to communicate. Permanently, whenever he wants, then only he communicate. So he, we will not use, uh, uh, will not go with uh, uh, fixed frequency option. Okay. So the another way of using FDMA is the frequency will change depending on some pattern. Okay. So that that the pattern in which the frequency getting changed. So that is called as hopping sequence. The sender and the receiver should be synchronized with the hopping sequence. Again, this synchronization is also a uh, little problematic so so whenever a hopping pattern is fixed the particular station will use the hopping pattern for considerably a long uh, a large amount of time okay and then the communication uh, from the base station uh, to the mobile station that communication is called as downlink and the communication from the mobile station to the base station that is called as uplink okay and there are different frequencies for downlink and there are different frequencies for uplink and generally each uh, the width of the each frequency uh, each channel will be 200 kilohertz so that's what uh, about uh, ftma technique so next uh, we'll be moving to the uh, next medium access technique which is time division multiple access okay so compared to fdma technique time division multiple access provides a much flexible scheme okay because uh, it comp it includes all technologies that allocates cer certain time slots for communication so uh, why it is more flexible in the sense now you need not to tune into certain frequency tuning into a certain frequency is not required now tuning is not required the receiver can stay on the same frequency there is only one frequency and the receiver can use the same frequency for the whole time okay so using only one frequency is very simple for receivers and transmitters and there are uh, we have many algorithms uh, to control the medium access so listening to different frequency and uh, is 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 little challenging but but here that problem is uh, uh, not there okay so here the sender and the receiver must be synchronized based on time based on time domain the the sender and the receiver should be uh, synchronized okay so so again this can be done using a fixed pattern uh, similar to fdm technique that is that is by allocating a certain uh, certain fixed time slot for a channel or by using dynamic allocation scheme so like how in fdm we have discussed that the frequency can be fixed for a particular uh, for a particular user uh, permanently similarly but but generally that is used with radio stations and that is not not used with mobile stations so similarly when you go for kdma also you can say that this time slot will be always fixed for this particular user okay that is called as a fixed kdma or you can go for a dynamic kdma where the time slot will not be fixed based on the demand that time slots will be assigned for a different users so 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 that can, so so that concept is called as a, a fixed tdma or 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 dynamic tdma okay so okay so th so that's it about tdma time division uh, multiple access so the next topic that we'll be using is fixed tdm fixed time division uh, multiplexing already in the last uh, topic we have discussed the time division multiple access can work in two ways either it can be a, a fixed tdma or it can be a dynamic tdma so here let us uh, discuss how the concept of fixed tdm works so here the time slots are fixed 
in certain pattern for various uses and the time slots are fixed for uh, permanently okay different time slots will be used for uplink and downlink using the same frequency because there is no change in the frequency so let us uh, try to understand with a diagram so so the base station uses uh, 12 slots for downlink and mobile station also uses 12 slots for uplinks okay 12 different mobile station uh, uses the same frequency without interference because there is only one frequency but there are different time slots so let us see that particular diagram so that it will be clear so here you can see uh, now the medium is not multiplexed based on frequency uh, we have only one frequency and and everybody will be using the same frequency but the sender and the receiver were will be uh, will be using different time slots okay that is there is there is 12 slime slots time slots for downlink that is for the communication from the base station to mobile station and there is another 12 time slots for uplink that is for the communication from the mobile station to the base station okay so this will support up to 12 mobile station this concept uh, this particular diagram this typical example whatever it has shown it will support up to 12 mobile stations that is the mobile station one will use the first time slot whenever he want to communicate something to the base st uh, base station he will communicate using this time slot similarly if the mobile station want to send something whenever the base station want to send something to the mobile station it will use this time slot similarly if the mobile station want to send something to the base station it will use this time slot for for the mobile for the first mobile station similarly if the base station want to send something to the mobile station 2 it will use this time slot similarly if the mobile station 2 wants to send something to the base station it will use this time slot okay so this is how this technique works so so actually this technique was used in dct digital enhanced cordless telecommunication and the pattern is repeated for every 10 milliseconds that is this pattern will fastly it will repeat for this this is something like uh, how the processor context switches so it it context switch at a faster rate so so it repeats at every 10 milliseconds that is each slot will get 4.7 microseconds for their communication okay so each slots will get only 4.7 417 microsecond each slot will have get only 417 microsecond for their communication so this is uh, uh, this concept is uh, uh, fine for constant data rate if the data rate is constant that is for voice communication but it is not uh, efficient for burst data like for for internet communication or for browsing communication okay so and also it lay, it, it wastes a lot of bandwidth it is too static And is not inflexible. Okay, these are some of the uh, drawbacks with this uh, technique. Okay, so this is how uh, basically the fixed TDM concept uh, works. Okay, so what we have discussed here in the sense, first we have discussed TDMA. So in, with TDMA, uh, all the say, all the stations will be using the same frequencies, but they will be using, uh, but the time will be multiplexed. that is different users will be using the uh, channel at different time and this can be of two times either fixed tdm or dynamic tdm in fixed tdm the time will be the time slot will be fixed for a particular user that is that particular time slot will be used only by that user whereas in dynamic tdm the time slot will vary depending on other parameters so here we have discussed an example for a fixed tdm Uh, how tall uh, devices can 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 work based on uh, fixed tdm and also we have discussed how it is used in dect digital enhanced cordless wireless communication okay so let us stop here and then we'll continue uh, with classical aloha and other concepts in the next lecture okay thank you